I'm Lucy and welcome or welcome back to another video. Today is the 31st of January, so the first month of 2022 is done and so am I, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I'm also done with reading 12 books. Granted, a lot of them are short stories I have to read for school, but I still count them. So these are the ones I have in physical copies and the ones I have digitally I will show you a picture somewhere here or here on the screen depending on where I managed to put it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go through them probably like chronologically as I've read them and I'm gonna give you a little summary and um, tell you my thoughts about the book and maybe this video will give you an inspiration of what you want to read next and um, if you have read one of these books you can leave your own review down in the comments um, as well as tell me your favorite book of the month, if you want to, of course. So, we are going to start with Nikita Gill's Great Goddesses, Life Lessons from Myths and Monsters. I firstly actually picked it up because of the cover. I don't know if you can see it well, but I think it's like so cute. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a sucker for pretty covers, to be honest. And this book is... Um, like a poetry collection from uh, goddesses of Greek mythology and they really focus on the female perspective of things so it's actually starting with um, when they were still worshipped in um, the ancient Greek times up to the point where gods and goddesses just ceased to exist and made space for new religions and new myths and how they try to cope on Earth slash the underworld for Persephone, because <laughs> the god of the underworld is probably the only one who didn't go out of business. <laughs> um, yeah, and there are some very pretty poems in there, and it also focuses on environmental issues and pollution. And I really loved it. Um, I gave it a five star review, and I think it's so, so beautiful. And it also has really pretty illustrations of the goddesses. Um, and yeah, so I also um, like marked my favorites, so basically the entire book. <laughs> um, I just really loved it, and I think it was written so beautifully, and I love mythology generally, but that was, I don't know, another reason why I fell in love with it. And um, yeah, again, five star review, totally recommend it, not only because of the cover, but because it is very, very, very beautiful. Next, I've read Daddy by Emma Klein, um, which is a short story collection, and I have mentioned that in my January book haul. Um, and yeah, so <sighs> I've read that in the beginning of the month, um, so I had some time to think and memorize when I prepared for this video, and I realized that why I didn't think it was a waste of time to read it. I cannot properly remember any of the short stories. They were just quite... They were not dull. They were just very... Also not insignificant. I just... I didn't really remember them. So it was more of a book, you know, you read when, when you're in the mood for a short story because you don't want to pick up an entire novel and maybe want to read something in between, but nothing really to memorize in a way. So I gave that three stars actually and um yeah but again i didn't don't really think it was a waste of time and i think if you if you like short stories and if you or if you just look for a in-between read i think this book really would be for you next i've read a digital version slash audiobook because i have the digital version but um somewhere up here uh, i've read beowulf for school <laughs> And I started reading it as a digital version, but I switched to an audiobook quite quickly because I just couldn't keep focusing. I wish I could tell you that I focused better on the um, audiobook version, but to be honest, the only thing I remember happening are the things we discussed in class. And that's it. <laughs> I don't know, I just didn't really get into it. Maybe I'm not I'm not really the kind of person who would read 
this kind of poetry because it was like written in um in like the anglo-saxon time of england so quite a while back <laughs> like centuries ago like a lot of centuries ago and i was really waiting for the audiobook to finish because i really couldn't pick up but as i say i had to read it for for school so i i did want to finish it and i don't know if i'm uh, upset that i read slash listened to it or not but i, I just I just didn't really get into it, so I gave it like, two stars. <laughs> Next is another digital book I have, and a short story, uh, The Lottery, again, somewhere on the screen, by Shirley Jackson. Oh, um, by the way, um, Beowulf doesn't really have, uh, it does have an author, but it's an unknown author, slash we couldn't really pick an author. Um, the Lottery is written by Shirley Jackson, and it's about, it gives you like, Hunger Game vibes somehow. It's about a society um, that has this lottery and we follow the story in a little town and it's the uh, lottery drawing day and in the beginning I thought it's you know the ordinary lottery you'd think of where people get money from but no. Um, so every family has its na their name in this lottery box and a family is drawn and then from this family one person is drawn to be picked to be stoned, <laughs> which was quite a big plot twist, I guess. I mean, you could see it coming because in the beginning, the children actually collect the stones for the ending. But still, it was quite, it was a bizarre read, but <sighs> again, I'm not upset that I've read it because, you know, it was... It was also very interesting to read, but what p society could do and what people would accept to do for societal sake. I just found it very, very strange that people would actually actually be okay with being murdered for no reason at all. There's no reason why this is happening. Or they just don't tell us. It's, <laughs> it's just happening. <laughs> and... It was really baffling, but um, yeah, again, class read, um, but again, not upset that I've read it, three stars review, uh, just because it was very weird. <clears throat> then we have <laughs> another digital version and another short story for class, um, St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves, and I loved this short story. I gave it four stars because I thought thought it was so amazingly written. I really, re oh, it's by Karen Russell, by the way, I'm sorry. It's written like in such a great way that you really feel with the character. And this story is about a girl slash multiple girls who were raised by wolves, like literal wolves in the forest. And, um, Eventually, at a certain age, they are collected by humans to um, go to this boarding school where they learn proper human behaviour, where they learn how to be societically acceptable and how to actually behave and um, how to stop being this wolf they are. They learn the human language, they learn how to walk like a human, they learn how to wash themselves like a human, they learn how to be human. Uh, or the societal acceptable standard of a human. And we follow this girl um, in this boarding school and there are two other very significant girls. One of them adapts really quickly. Like she really tries to um, become this human. She really wants to please everyone. She really wants to, wants to be perfect. And this other girl is the complete opposite. She just cannot adapt to human ways she's she's not really able to leave her wolf character behind she's not really able to become this this societically pleasing person i want her to be and this will lead to conflicts because the girls dislike both of them they don't like this uh overachieving girl and they don't like this underachieving girl because in their eyes they're just weird 
Like in the beginning, they don't want to really accept who they are, so they don't like that this girl tries to please the people that brought them there. And uh, like in the middle to end, they want to be like that, so they despise the girl who cannot adapt because they feel embarrassed by her. And this girl, um, who's the narrator, <clears throat> she actually um, stays friends with that wolf girl. And at the climax of the story, um, the wolf girl tries to defend her in a very public space. And the wolf girl therefore is expelled and brought back into the forest. And none of the girls do anything about it. They just abandon that poor wolf. Because it's also not clear if she actually continues living or not. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, the, the story ends with the um, narrator to go back to her wolf family um, just to see them one more time and I just I found it so real in a way I mean yeah it's it's talking about girls that are raised by wolves which by the way would be quite cool <laughs> um, but the way it is and the way they talk and the way this all happens just reminded me of the colonization of um, everything not European or Western and it just kind of opened my eyes on how it must have been have to leave, leave their entire culture behind to adapt to new ways that were seen as fit and seen as right instead of their own way they lived all the time and how they were abandoned by everyone if they wouldn't adapt to it and I just found that very very sad and kind of eye-opening and yeah i don't know i really liked this story just because it was very real for story i really liked it and um moving on to the next book is another greek mythology and this time i have a physical version it's pandora's jar by natalie haynes which i've also shown you in my january book haul and um as i said i already read it back then and this was a five star review because I loved this book. I swallowed it whole and it was so great. It's nonfiction and um, talks about women in Greek mythology. So as opposed to Greek um, goddesses, this focuses on the women rather than the goddesses. And um, they do that, like um, Natalie Haynes does that in a very feministic way. Um, she depicted some of the most known legends and no, most known myths by, um, by humans and um, instead of telling it from the male perspective she was telling it from a female perspective such as um, the story of Medusa or the story of Helen or the story of um, Penelope and I just really loved the way she did it because it was so witty and so sarcastic sometimes and how she just explained what happened to them and how they were marked as monsters by society because they acted in a way that they should have in that situation was was just phenomenal. I really, really enjoyed it and I thought it was very, very great and amazingly written and again witty and informative. You learn you learn so much about these women and you learn so much about the history behind it and you learn so much about the myths and how Asian Greek people lived too and what significant it had back then and I just all in all really love this book and again I would highly recommend this book to everyone who likes Greek mythology and um, again I also would recommend um, Great Goddesses for that obviously but I really enjoyed this book I really loved it fast the review and highly recommend it. Next I've read not the digital version um, The Fine Print again somewhere up the screen this is a romance and it's quite something I wouldn't really read because I'm not really this young adult romance kind of person I don't really read it that much but if it's good I definitely pick it up and um, uh, I watched a YouTube video where somebody was talking about this book and it sounded like something I would enjoy <laughs> frankly so I um, got the digital version and I've read it and I loved it like it was four star review and I did not expect to enjoy it as much, but I really, really liked it. It was it was very, very sweet and sometimes very annoying too. Um, so basically it's about um, 
this uh, it's by Lauren Escher I always forget to mention the author I'm sorry so the book is about and I'm so sorry but I actually forgotten the main char characters names <laughs> and I, I really can't remember them and I don't know why because I really like this book anyway <laughs> So it's about this guy whose grandfather just died and the grandfather had this huge theme park like it was enormous and every staff member actually lived in this theme park which i find quite cool <laughs> um and the grandfather just died and in order to inherit their parts of the company him and his three brothers had to um do a task and his task was to go um, to one of the theme parks as a director and uh, for six months and he had to like overview and direct everything that was going on in there and he actually had n no intention of actually doing that he really hated that and he wanted to get out as soon as possible um, and he was working with the um, designers of um, the theme park to make something very very big um, after these six months to make sure that he did his job right and for that they needed new people so in comes the main love interest it's also written in um, both perspective from the guy and the girl which I really liked uh, who wants to be a creator really really badly for the theme park um, so she submits the idea and um, she's chosen <laughs> So they meet and she's like very sweet to everyone, very kind and she just, um, she's like the good in everyone and he's the complete opposite and he just couldn't believe that she's actually that kind of person. But she was and they kind of start working together a lot and they kind of start doing a lot together um, outside of work and they start having this relationship and um, there's a lot of up and downs but in the end it ends happily and was very very sweet and I really liked it and um, yeah I really enjoyed this book because it was I don't know it was just kind of wholesome you know it was something something very sweet to read in between it was very emotional too like I cried at some parts um, yeah but I really liked it it was very very well written and uh, I recommend it to people who like um, like romance and uh, this grumpy sunshine uh, I hate everyone in the world but you kind of trope um, yeah so I recommend that to these people because I think you'd really enjoy this book then we have another physical version The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman I remember the author's name um, and I've seen that actually all over Instagram and YouTube so I thought, you know, I should pick it up because it sounded so funny and it's like crime and mystery and I love crime and mystery books. So um, <laughs> I really wanted to read it. And it's about these, these elderly people who live in this very, very cool retirement home, which is more like an entire city. And it's so fancy. And I, when I've read about what they all have, I immediately was like, when I'm old, I want to live there. It was so cool. They have like pools and uh, game rooms and parks and literally everything you could dream of and it was so it was so fancy honestly and i just really love this place and they have this thursday murder club where they meet every thursday to solve an old unsolved murder or uh, the murder didn't have to be unsolved they just had to think that they um that the wrong person was framed for this murder and they would just roll it all up and um, do all of the investigation again with all the information they have and then suddenly the murder a murder happens like right in front of their door and <laughs> these four retired people try to solve that <laughs> and they kind of sneak their way to working with the police without everyone else knowing but these two police people and them and it was so funny how they did that and I know and Elizabeth is awesome like if you read the book and you know who, who Elizabeth is I think you agree that I mean she's a bit <laughs> special but I really loved her I think she was great and um, funnily enough they actually do solve that murder in the end which wouldn't really come to a surprise to anyone but I just really loved it uh, it was a four-star review and um, 
yeah, I found it quite funny and um, refreshing for, you know, your ordinary murder mysteries you read, usually. And next we have Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe, which I have also talked about in my January uh, book haul. And um, that's by Benjamin Allier Sands. Unless I can't pronounce the name, so I'm truly sorry. But I also love that book. That was a five-star review and was so sweet. And it was also a romance, so <laughs> that kind of redeems my I don't really read romance comment. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was worth it. It was so sweet and so cute. And um, it's LGBTQ, so we have um, a gay, lo gay love interest, which I found really, really cute. And adorable and i just loved this book it was so sweet and it was honest too and it had the um friends lovers drop um <coughs> which i really enjoyed and there's also a second part i have bought and you will probably see in my february wrap up and book haul because i cannot wait to read that <laughs> and next up i have read never let me go by kazuo ishiguro also for school but um, I really liked it. It's a four star review. It's a dystopia and science fiction, so I don't really know why I wanted to pick it up because I don't usually read dystopias. And uh, giving, a dystop giving a dystopia four stars is also kind of new to me. But this really deserved it. Like in the beginning, I was not as hooked, but towards the end, I, I just couldn't pick it up, uh, put it down anymore. I just loved it. Like in the end, it became so, so good and so intense that um, I really had to finish it in one go. I did not put it down after like the second half started because then it really, really, really went great. So this is why it's a four-star review for me. And I recommend that to everyone who likes dystopian and science fiction novels. And um, it's about... Um, the children who grew up in this uh, kind of boarding school but not really boarding school and um they're raised to eventually um donate and i'm kind of measuring spoiling everything right now um but then they're not supposed to have a life they're not supposed to get a job they're not supposed to grow old they're not supposed to have children they're not supposed to have any of that they have a certain purpose in life and um, the people at that school make sure that they follow this purpose and um, it is, as I said, following um, mainly one character but generally three characters from this school um, who grew up together and um, eventually lost sight from each other but found their way back and um, yeah, it was very, very, very written. I mean... <laughs> Ishiguro is a Nobel Prize winner, so you know, you might expect a good book. <laughs> but again, highly recommend it to everyone who likes dystopian and science fiction. Then, again, as a digital version, I have read The Good Girl for my um, BuzzFeed video I did. <clears throat> it's uh, The book is by Mary Kubica, and it's um, a thriller, and I gave it like 3.25 stars. Just because I thought it was good. But it wasn't significant, it wasn't really something that will stuck with me forever. So it's basically about this girl who, um, I'm just going briefly in that because I did an entire video on this book. It's about this um, girl who's abducted and eventually falls in love with her abductor and he falls in love with her as well. And um, it's written from three different perspectives, the abductor, the mother and the detective who's trying to solve this abduction and it's written in two times it's before um, slash while she's gone and after slash when she came back and while I enjoyed that I didn't enjoy the detective's perspective that much just because I didn't really think it added any anything to the story you didn't get any kind of new information and um, yeah the mother I found like all right um but in the end you kind of care more about the love story between 
um, the abductor and the girl, which I don't really see fitting for a thriller. I don't know, in the end it just became this, this kind of romance story more than a thriller or like a drama even more so and I didn't like it that much but the overall story I found good like it was well written it was easy to read um, just in the end it kind of moved purpose if you will and um, if you want to have a more detailed um, review on that um, you can check out um, my BuzzFeed video I did previously. <clears throat> then the last book I've read is another short story um, I have read for an exam I actually had today. Um, it is um, called Looking for Petronilla. I again have that as a um, digital version and I put the picture somewhere up the screen. Uh, it's a short story. I gave it three stars. I think three or four I think like thinking about it I probably would give like at least three and a half to be honest um it's um about this this woman who goes back to her hometown to find Petronilla <laughs> and um doing that we learn a lot about the history of this hometown and we learn who this woman actually is and what happened to Petronilla and um it's written by Emma Donoghue I think it's pronounced and um like i can't really tell you a lot about it, what it is about because i would spoil it the entire thing and i do think that this is something you should like gradually know because you know we gradually get to know what happens during reading it so i don't really want to tell you too much about it but i really i really liked it i i found it very very sad and very like telling about the time and um, I just really loved the dynamic between the main character and Petronilla when they um, were together um, I think they were very like, sweet in a sense and I do believe they were lovers although that's not explicitly said um, but this is just what I picked up and um, I really enjoyed this short story just because like it was it was like 11 pages so it's also not that much to read but it was you know it was very informative in a way and it was very sweet well it wasn't really sweet it was very honest actually it was um very telling about what happened back then like in that time it happened and um yeah so i really enjoyed that and i think i gave it three and a half stars um yeah and i I'd recommend that to everyone who likes short stories, really, and um, maybe also like mysteries, because it was, was also very mystic. And yeah, again, a recommendation for everyone who likes short stories or for people who just want to read something in between and like this mystic kind of vibe. So that was all the books I've read this month, and um, I'm actually quite proud of myself that I, I've read two of my TBRs. Um, and I do hope that I manage to get around um, more of my TBR pile next month and the month after. And um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more. And um, again, if you have any kind of book recommendations or if you want to talk about a book, you can leave it down in the comments below and you can discuss maybe your favorite books or books you didn't like, whatever you'd like. And um, you can also follow me on my social media, which are all linked um, in the description down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I will see you in my next one. Bye.